Hello everybody, how are you doing? This is Amanda. It's May the 21st, 2020. I'm making a concerted effort to say the right date because I am jumping ahead all the time at the moment in, in terms of these timelines. And I just tried to make a little video for you and I only got like a minute into it, but I said the date was June the 21st. I think I've done that before this month. And then I went to correct myself because I thought I'm obviously being taken more towards the summer solstice energies. Um, looked in my astrology diary and opened it on 21st of July, which is also a either a full moon or a new moon in Cancer. Can't remember for now. But it just seems to be as though um, there is this, I'm being shown this pathway. It's quite nice. I'm being shown a pathway um, and it's a dusk scene. And it's as though there are these flaming torches um, as pointers along this pathway in the dusk light. But it almost feels quite, it doesn't feel gothic or anything like that. It almost feels quite romantic. It feels as though that a path is being led um, towards something for some, some people. Um, it doesn't have to be romance. It could be something else. But I have to say there is a romantic energy here. And I must just pass a message on as well because I've got some de I've got some flowers sitting on my desk, which are um, roses today. OK, so I've got my roses and uh, I was just looking at them and I heard the song by Elvis Costello. Um, I know I'm showing my age here, but not Elvis Presley, Elvis Costello, a UK artist, great artist, actually. Um, and he did a song called A Good Year for the Roses. And I thought, hmm, I wonder what that says. And I'm just going to read you a couple of verses because this is a message not for everybody out there, but it's a message for a couple of you I'm hearing. OK, so I'm just going to pass this on and then we'll move on to other messages for the wider collective. So um, it says, what a good year for the roses. Many blooms still linger there. The lawn could stand another mowing. Funny, I don't even care. As you turn to walk away, as the door behind you closes, the only thing I have to say, it's been a good year for the roses. After three full years of marriage, it's the time that you haven't made the bed. I guess the reason we're not talking, there's so little left to say we haven't said. While a million thoughts go racing through my mind, I find I haven't said a word. From the bedroom, the familiar sound of a baby's crying goes unheard. What a good year for the roses, many blooms still linger there. The lawn could stand another mowing, funny I don't even care. And as you turn to walk away, as the door behind you closes, the only thing I have to say is it's been a good year for the roses. Okay. That means something. It means something to a few people and <clears throat> it's about many things. It's about closing the door on... Um, maybe some big chapters of life. Maybe some not so big chapters of life. So I'm a bit affected by the energy of that. Think about the door that might be closing in your life, whatever that means. And um, just listen to the song. What are you doing to me, Elvis? Uh, right, I'm going to reach for a spray at this point and, um, oh Jesus, I wasn't, sorry, I'm not into blaspheme, I wasn't expecting that to come in. Um, I'm going to spray, <laughs> I'm going to spray a bit of Bob, why not, why not, let's spray a bit of Bob Marley, uh, okay. <clears throat> one love, one love. Um, yeah, you see, because on this spray, um, this is our Lemon Joy spray, but we did a Bob Marley special. I think we've still got some in the um, in the shop. It says, it's his line, don't worry about a thing because every little thing is going to be all right. Let's just have a bit of, and he matches my shirt, of course, doesn't he? Don't worry about a thing. Cause every little thing is gonna be all right. Don't worry about a thing. Cause every little thing is gonna be all right. Okay, thank you, Bob, yeah. 
Okay, where are we going to go? Let's just pull a card at this point. I'm also going to refer back to a card that I pulled earlier on this week. Um, wisdom. We've got the card of wisdom that's come out. Deep diving for wisdom. Um, and on the bottom of the deck is gateway. Diving deep. I think many of us have been diving deep over the last couple of months, maybe as a result of lockdown, maybe not. But there's been an enormous amount of reflection, diving deep for the wisdom, the answers, the truth of particular situations that we may be in. And it's as though having done that, having found the answer, whatever the answer is, um, and it might very well be linked into that song, OK, where, where one door closes, there is a gateway opening. You know, it's that saying that as one door closes, another door always will open. And that is the truth. The thing is, you have to have the trust and the faith to close the first door before the other gateway opens. So I think that's why I was being shown these um, these different dates, June the 21st, July the 21st. I'm not actually seeing beyond that at the moment. I'm just being shown this couple of months period that seems to be very important for a lot of people. It does feel as though it's linked into relationships. But it doesn't have to just be linked into relationships. It could be many things. It could also be business. It could be a door of a business closing, which is happening. That's the reality that's happening out there for many people at the moment. But equally, sometimes you've got to be brave enough to say, I'm not sure this is going to work anymore. Um, I'm not sure I can survive in this post, you know, virus world that we've now got, that we're living at the new normal trust that spirit is going to show you a new gateway, a new way to basically navigate the new. So um, I think that's what those two are about, very much so. I'm also hearing um, with this card, which shows the mermaid who's diving deep for the wisdom, which is that she knows how to swim underwater. So there's this whole thing that I think some people are feeling very overwhelmed at the moment in terms of circumstances, um, or maybe what they have to do to close out a chapter in their life. But yet, take the analogy of the mermaid. She knows how to do this. Deep in her soul, she knows how to swim underwater. And of course, water is linked into all of our emotions, into that very deep stuff um, that some of us haven't wanted to face. I love the, um, the backs of these cards. This is the Denise Lynn deck, um, which I'm using quite a lot at the moment because it's just my latest deck that I bought. It's the Sacred Destiny Oracle. But, you know, I live by the sea. So, you know, the, the dynamics of the way that the waves move is something very beautiful that I often just stand and watch because it's that thing of, the you know, the wave goes out and then the wave always comes back. You know, um, the water goes out rather than the wave, the wave will always come back. And it's just as though something is um, something is coming back, is what I want to say. Um, what you've wished for, what you've wanted to manifest, what you've asked for help with. Um, it's as though that wave is coming. But with that wave, um, there may be some endings and new beginnings Okay, for this year. I have noticed, um, I had a very busy week. I, mean, I always have busy weeks, but last week in particular was very busy. And I would have quite liked to have done a video around May the 11th, but it was my daughter's 18th birthday, so I didn't. Um, but what I noted around May the 11th, but equally running right up to this moment in time, which is June the 21st. Let's see, I've done it again. God's sake, May the 21st. OK, well, maybe it goes to June the 21st, what I'm about to say. I'm, I'm noticing in lots of people's lives, my friends' lives, my clients' lives, Things are definitely, definitely coming to a head. Things are coming back that needed to be looked at, dealt with, worked through so you can get to that next stage. OK, you can literally get to the go through the gateway to the to the new. Um, I can't really break confidence, confidences, but all I will say is that all of the people I know about five people in particular, and this is all within the last week, who've had things happen where it's like, wow, this has suddenly all been tied up, you know, the closure has happened, or um, the, the firing gun has, has gone off and now we can, we can proceed again. 
even with like my mum, you know, I've talked about my mum and the move, which was completely stalled just at the time before we went into lockdown. She was about to exchange contracts literally within 24 hours before lockdown happened here in the UK. Well, as of yesterday, we're all back on again. So uh, it's just one example of many and all sorts of different situations in different people's lives as well. So really, really have a think about what you're being asked to look at at the moment and face and try and take a deep breath and go to that place to feel something, to say something um, that needs doing or acting upon. OK, so we're in a very, very powerful period, I feel a very, very powerful period. OK, I might come back and do a few more cards in a moment. But I just as I, say, I wanted this to be more of a chatty video. Um, as she said, nearly bursting into tears in the first three minutes. But anyway, you know me, wear my heart on my sleeve. Um, is there such a thing as not being deep with Metatron? I don't know whether there actually is, to be honest. If you work with the energy of Metatron, um, it's a constant journey of that, to be honest. It's a constant journey of exploring deeper and deeper. Um, and personally, I wouldn't have it any other way. I wouldn't have it any other way. I think he's the most amazing guide. Um, Oh, I'll say something here on the subject of healing, which is I was doing a session with uh, one of the people that has done the training with me to become a Metatron colour healer. And um, what suddenly struck me is, of course, as with any other healing system, um, we are, uh, you know, we teach hands on healing, but we also teach distance healing. And of course, with this new world that we've got now and social distancing, and we don't know how long that may last for or not. We don't know when businesses properly will open up. And of course, any business which actually involves touch, whether it be massage, whether it be hands on healing, whether it be hairdressing, whether it be dentistry, whatever, um, it's a bit more tricky. It's a bit more difficult, especially if it's voluntary. You know, if you've got a tooth that's really hurting and you, you have to get it taken out or whatever, well, you're going to go and do that. But if you're um, thinking about having a, a hands on healing, for example, and you're still not sure about is it safe, is it not, with regard to all of this um, confusion that is out there in terms of passing on the virus and what stage the virus is at and is there going to be another stage of virus? Some people very well might just think, OK, well, I'm going to stall that. I'll do that when it feels safer. So it came to me yesterday that this is, the, this is a big opportunity for us as healers to really claim properly how powerful distance healing can be, how, how powerful it can be and how powerful it is. And I don't think this, I have permission to share this anyway. I'm not going to say who it is, um, but I'm just going to tell you what happened. And this is somebody who is one of my uh, Metatron healers okay and this is just to show what distance healing can do I mean there are many many different examples of this but this is a recent one that came in last week and um, this person says to me since February she had been doing some distance sessions on um, a, a relative of hers who actually lives in a different country and um, what had been happening was, I'll just read it. It says, since the second week of March, we've been focusing specifically on her multiple myeloma, which is blood cancer. Three sessions she's had in total with regard to distance healing. She also suffers with dry eye condition and a terrible hip pain, which also we've been working on in distance healing. Um, During the first session, calling on Metatron and Mother Mary for guidance, um, Violet was used to uh, bring in some healing. Um, I don't want to say too much more because it gets a bit personal at that point. I want to give you the feedback in terms of these three, three distance sessions that were with this lady who's got these problems. Client feedback. Um, early this week, the relative rang me with the news that she had received a call from her consultant whom she has been seeing for the past five years since her initial diagnosis. He has never telephoned her before and proceeded to give her a long detailed account of his latest ideas for her future treatment. His final comment blew her away. He said, this is quote, 
something remarkable has happened with your lambda light chains. The blood test of two weeks ago shows that they decreased from 800 to 686 milligrams stroke L. This has never happened in your treatment history. She was unsurprisingly stunned and went on to tell him of her sessions with distance healing. Um, he listened and responded, well, I'm all for miracles. He was respectful and sincere. Um, now, that I just think is incredible. Um, and it's one of many. OK, so I, I think before everybody starts rushing and saying, can I have a session? Can I have a session? Can I have a session? Can we also just remember some basics of healing? OK, which is that there is no magic wand. All right. For um, healing to happen, a number of different conditions uh, and energies have to be present, um, including that the person having the healing has to really be prepared to maybe do the work, go wherever it needs to be, and has also maybe learned what they need to learn from the, the situation they find themselves in. If they're still meant to learn something from whatever is ailing them, then um, healing will support them and healing will help them, but it won't take away something that they're still meant to be working through. Okay, does that make sense? Um, and anyway, you know, I'm not coming on here and just sort of spouting on about Metatron healing because you could you could say this about many forms of distance healing. OK, whether it's Reiki, whatever it is, you know, whatever form of distance healing you do. Um, I just think it's something that as a community for those healers that watch me, I think it's something that we really need to be um, owning how powerful this modality is. Because the reality is you might not have the ability to get people actually into your home or into your clinic to put your hands onto them. So working at distance is something that is extremely valuable at this moment in time. And it works. OK, it really works. Realise, too, that you can send healing to anybody in your family, any in your, anybody in your community, to the wider world that needs it. Um, it's it's like a form of enhanced prayer, you know, um, it brings in the energy of prayer. It brings in the energy of sacred ritual. It brings in the energy of um, understanding uh, what a higher energy is and what it feels like and then channeling that. I'm not going to make this whole video about distance healing because it could easily be that. Um, as I say, I've got courses where I, I teach people this. Um, and if you want to know what they are, I didn't mean this to be something where I'm talking so much about it, but it's the level one and the level two courses that we run. OK, and the distance healing comes into the level two part, um, which you have to do. You have to do the first part before you do the second, obviously. OK. Um, on the subject of healing, you see, I don't think I put this on YouTube, but on Facebook, I did a little mini video earlier on in the week, which was just sort of like, what's the week looking like? And this card came up. Now, I pulled this card on Monday, um, Monday the 18th, I think. So we're a few days later and it's the card of um, healing chaos. And it shows this blinking big sort of tornado type energy stroke cyclone, cyclone, I want to now say, because of course what I didn't realise when I pulled this card was that there was a gigantic cyclone heading for India and Bangladesh. And I do have people that watch me in India. I don't know whether I have people that watch me in Bangladesh. I hope I do. But I know I've got people that watch me in India. Um, and I just wanted to say that I think it's important talking about the subject of healing that maybe we send, we definitely, we send our prayers to the people of India and Bangladesh. Because I'm just reading my, um, uh, the news here, and it says that um, this super cyclone, well, there's a couple of things to say about it, because actually the, the level of death that went with it, thank God, was not as high as it could have been. They're actually saying only 20 people died. I mean, whether that's true or not, I've no idea. But the point is that um, this cyclone remember we're in 2020 okay we're in the year 2020 i have to keep reminding myself of that because i'm flipping timelines the whole time but it is 2020 this cyclone that hit um bangladesh and eastern india was um was the most powerful one in 20 years and they're reporting that only 20 people died 
still rest in peace to those 20. But again, it's this whole 20 energy. The most powerful cyclone in 20 years, in 2020, hits these, this part of the world. Um, and it was, it was a really bad one. Um, so the other, so prayers to that part of the world, I think, because there's going to be a huge cleanup operation and I'm sure there's much devastation. The other thing in terms of sending our prayers and healing, it says here, I'm just reading this from the BBC, it's from the Guardian, actually. It says in Bangladesh, officials said that they were waiting for reports from the Sundarbans, a UNESCO World Heritage Site famed for its mango forest and population of endangered Bengal tigers, which bore the brunt of the storm. So again, you see, I'm wanting to go back to a card that I pulled this week, which I must show you. So one of the worst affected places was this UNESCO World Heritage Site, where there are these endangered tigers. Well, the card that I pulled earlier on in the week, it didn't have a tiger, but I just got to show you something. Because again, in look, it was this. It's a black panther. I know it's not a tiger, it's a black panther, but it's still a big cat, okay? <laughs> um, but it's in the forest. It's in this fertile forest. Success. I'm wanting to put these two cards together, but I don't know. I mean, when I first read about this cyclone this morning, because I hadn't realised, I didn't know if it had hit or not, and it has hit. So I was like catching up on the news. Um, my heart really opened for the people that were affected and the land that was affected. And I had a moment of like, oh my God, you know, when are we going to get it as a world? Unity consciousness, that we're all one, um, that these people that might be living in very um, inferiorly built um, properties, you know, with no proper access to, you know, all the things we take for granted in our part of the world, maybe, you know, when are they going to have the same equal opportunities? And what does that mean for us as individuals, you know, that we are going to have to change our behaviour? It's all very well saying, and I had this actually on my duality video, a few people came back at me with what I've mentioned about one, I'm not going to say the person's name because it just triggers a lot of people. But, you know, I've, I've talked about um, overpopulation of our planet. And a lot of people came back like, oh, but, you know, the planet can support everybody. That's just sort of a lie. And it's like, yeah, but you realise for that to happen, you have to change your behaviour. I have to change my behaviour. We all have to change our behaviour because you can't have an equal distribution of everything unless the people that have got more give more to the people that have got less. So it's a whole, you know, so I've, I've but I've to now, now I'm looking at these two cards, I'm thinking, hmm, there's something that comes out of this chaotic situation for India and Bangladesh that actually feels as though it's going to be successful. I mean, I can't help but and maybe it's linked to, do any of you know anything about this UNESCO site and the tigers? Because, I mean, he, I know he's a panther, but he looks very comfortable in his home there. He looks very protected as well. I mean, the black panther is a card of protection. I hope to God that these tigers were protected um, and they're okay. Maybe somebody could let me know on that. Um, because we should care. We should care because um, I just think we should. We don't have to, but I think it's, what I, it's who I am. I care anyway. And I know a lot of you do as well. Um, where should we go now? Oh, I'm going to just have, I'm going to lighten it up a little bit. I got a great gift left at my door yesterday. And the only reason this person left this at my door is because it's this. <laughs> they used to come to a meditation group that I ran in my home, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago, maybe more than 10 years ago. And I used to have a meditation group, there was about eight of us, I think. And we used to meet, whether it was every week or every month, I can't remember now. But anyway, you came to this, didn't you? And uh, thank you so much. It really cheered me up yesterday. Not that I was in a bad place, but I was tired yesterday. Um, and I just, I just really appreciate it. So now I've got a Prince mug, guys. I mean, how cool is this? Pretty cool, he's saying, pretty cool. <gasps> mm. um, again, without wanting to get into the whole face mask, mask um, discussion again, uh, I noted that the Prince Estate are selling masks with um, they're selling his they're selling masks with some pithy quote that Prince um, either sang or said in his life. Um, 
And he's like, he's got like a raised eyebrow to that. But yeah, we, let's not go there today, hey, Prince. And, and let's just have anything for a quiet life today. I've, I've ruffled enough feathers this week, I think. Um, actually, surprisingly few feathers ruffled, which is great because it shows that people are ready for the teaching. Um, <clears throat> okay, let's pull some cards. Let's see where we're going to go. I have actually just got um, in the post a parcel from somebody. Uh, I don't think it is cards, actually. I just wondered if it was cards, and I don't think it is. I'll open that later. Okay, let's pull some cards. Let's focus. Shall we stay with this same deck? Because it seems to be talking quite well, doesn't it? So remember, we've got the card of wisdom diving deep. We've got the gateway. And we had these two cards as well earlier on in the week. Healing, chaos and success. Right. So we've got this new moon in Gemini tomorrow, haven't we? Let me just get that. I'm sure I'm right. New moon in Gemini. Yes, the 22nd. I'm not going to be doing my live stream tomorrow. I know I promised I might do a live stream this week, but actually um, I've got a brand new laptop, which is all super duper. It looks brilliant. And uh, as of last night, I think everything's ready to go on it. But, you know, I'm, um, I'd like to have a little play with it before I go live. We don't want any more Eckhart Tolle moments. Or maybe we do, you know, maybe we do. Maybe that's, you know, it's good to lighten it up occasionally. I had Eckhart Tolle sort of um, playing in the background of the first couple of minutes of my last live stream, which I actually thought was pretty hilarious in retrospect. I didn't at the time. because so I was like, my God, who is that man? But it was quite funny. Let's just light some incense and then we're going to pull some more cards. It's a funny energy here in the UK at the moment. And, and maybe this will resonate for other countries. But, you know, I live by the sea, as you know, and it's quite hot today. This incense will not light. I'm going to get another one. That is just, I don't know what is wrong with that. It's like a bad cigar. Not that I'm condoning cigars. I can't stand the smell of cigar smoke, actually. My first husband occasionally used to smoke a cigar. It was disgusting. Quite ironic. Why would I say that? And I'm wearing this shirt. You see my shirt, the wild one? This is like Clint Eastwood. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm suddenly having a rant about cigars. Where the hell has that come from? Okay, there must be some sort of um, Western star who wants to come through. You're not coming through today. I'm too tired. But, you know, I do feel there's somebody coming through. Um, uh, it could be somebody like Lee Marvin. Has he died? I think he's died. We were, we were watching a Lee Marvin film at the weekend. Um, just switch my computer off could be Lee Marvin. What films did he do? Good old Western. Right, let's just light this incense. And let's get serious. I'm just wanting to see something about Lee Marvin coming through. Hold on, guys. Um, oh, that incense smells lovely. See when he died. Lee Marvin. Wandering Star. Oh, yes. Wandering Star. There's another song. It seems to be a day of songs for us to listen to. Lee Marvin, I was born under a wandering star. Wheels are made for rolling. Mules are made to pack. I've never seen a sight that didn't look better looking back. Oh, oh my gosh. This is tied into the other song, which was about closing doors and walking away from something, whether it whether it's job person, I don't know, behaviour, addiction, whatever. Um, wow. I was born under a wandering star. Mud can make you prisoner and the plains can bake you dry. I mean, for God's sake, I'm wearing the bloody t-shirt. Um, snow can burn your eyes, but only people make you cry. Home is made for coming from, for dreams of going to, which with any luck will never come true. I was born under a wandering star. Do I know where hell is? Hell is in hello. Heaven is in goodbye forever. It's time for me to go. I was born under a wandering star. Oh my God, guys, I don't know. If what I'm saying is resonating, just go and listen to those two songs. Elvis Costello, it's a good time for the roses or it's a good year for the roses. It was a good year for the roses. And Lee Marvin, I was born under a wandering star. But I also feel as though Lee Marvin, 
he's got something to say. Um, when did he die? He died. Hmm. I mean, he was one of the real... He was born in 1924 and he died in 1987 in Tuscan, Arizona. Um, did he play the baddies? Was he a baddie usually? I'm wondering whether there's something in that. One of his favorite, one of his shows or films was The Dirty Dozen. I don't know. It's funny, there's a picture here of him when he was a younger man and you know, you wouldn't recognize him. I, I, I just know him, that sort of craggy faced older man. Okay. Be careful what t-shirt you choose to wear on any one day. There seems to be a portal. <laughs> the different different energies to come through okay right well there's, there is something there isn't there about you know being the wild one you know walk on the wild side <laughs> follow the wandering star are we are we getting the message there's something here about remembering your free free spiritedness Maybe it's linked into coming out of lockdown for a lot of people as well. It's sort of this having been having felt very hemmed in and not able to go anywhere or do anything. We're being given the chance to maybe adventure slightly further afield, even if it's not into another country or anything. Um, even if it's just, you know, I'm going to take the f first journey out of my hometown. I mean, it's happening here. As I say, where I live, the beaches are very full. Um not commenting on that i'm not going down there personally when it's like that i've never liked it when it's like that but um don't know sorry i can't move on from this there's something here about wildness and free spiritedness and following the wandering star letting the stars guide you it's that surrender energy again isn't it seeing where life wants to take you accessing the energy within you that wants change that is seeking freedom and adventure and new experiences and new tastes and textures and feelings and it seems to all come up from the sacral energy um this has been winking at me the whole time i've been talking this is the tangerine blush which is the sacral chakra spray um it's like a deep activation of the sacral chakra going on. I mean, it's been going on for months, to be honest, those of you that have been following my work. And again, principle, all that in, you know, the activation of the sacral chakra. Well, now, where's that going to take you? The ideas that you've had, where's it going to take you? Let, 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 let yourself wander. Let your mind wander. Do something different. Break out of the box. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Let's, uh, how, how long are we? We're at 33 minutes. I didn't want to make this too long today. Uh, let's just pull a few more cards. Let's pull some cards then for this new moon in Gemini, shall we? New moon in Gemini. And I'm going to bring in another deck here as well. I'm going to bring in the Quantum Oracle by Sandra Ann Taylor. I'm also going to pull a card from there. Okay, I'll tell you why in a moment. I want to do a card for our shadow as well. Anyway, Gemini full moon. Let's just have a look at the energy, please. Gemini new moon, rather. Commitment. Commitment. What are you signing up for? Your next chapter of your life. Look at look what's on the bottom of the pack. Status quo. Status quo is on the way out. Um, no, not the rock band. Um, the status quo. You know, just doing the same old, same old, because it's always been done that way. Nah, that's on the bottom of the pack. I'm interpreting that it's on the way out. Um, not that it's coming in. Um, 
What are you committing to? I mean, he's literally signing a contract. What contract are you signing for this next chapter of your life? Who are you committing to? What are you committing to? Um, what projects are you committing to? Um, what are you committing to within yourself? Okay, think about your behaviour. Uh, maybe you've been fighting some form of addiction, for example. I, I know people that are going through that at the moment as well. So are you going to sign on the dotted line and try and face that and do something about it? Or aren't you? Only you can answer that. Um, are you going to sign up to be the best version of yourself that you can be in, in this next chapter of your life? Are you going to sign up for 5D? You know? Are you going to sign up to truly take the red pill? Okay, those of you that have watched my last video, which has got nothing to do with politics, it's to do with how deep do you really want to go in terms of awakening um, with no judgment, you know, on what anybody else's path is. One of you, thank you. I think you were called Zachary. Sorry if I've got your name wrong. I know you're a man anyway, <laughs> young guy by the looks of it. And you wrote a really intelligent um, comment on my last video our soul adventures one the, the duality video and um i can't remember exactly what you were saying but you also ended it by saying something along the lines of um of course the teaching that i gave in that video there is of course a next chapter which is it's not just about seeing black and white in uh somebody you know dark and light uh it's to do with them being able to totally transcend duality consciousness um, to a different level and I didn't I didn't take it as far as I could have taken it because we need um, we need to go at the pace that everybody is comfortable with um, but Sorry, I've gone a little bit blank and I'm just trying to get my get my thought back. Hold on. It happens, I'm afraid. I'm a human being. Maybe it'll come back if it was what I was trying to say there. Oh, yeah. I think it was just linked into how deep do you want to go? How far do you want to take it? And uh, there's always a next level is what I'm basically trying to say. OK, so I was talking about the red pill, wasn't I? That's what it was. OK, so commitment is the first thing that comes up with the Gemini new moon. Let's see what else we get. He looks very pleased with himself as well, doesn't he? He looks very pleased with himself. He's finally made this choice. He's finally made this decision. He's finally committed to doing what feels right for him or she has made a decision that feels right for her and she's you know she realizes that by signing on that dotted line or he realizes by signing on that dotted line that it's going to require some work it's going to require some change uh but it's okay he's actually got his sleeves rolled up there let's see what else we get gemini new moon 22nd of may behind a mask few things I'd like to say about that. Let's just see what else we get with it. Happy success. We've got two cards here. Um, we've got higher self as well. We've got two cards that are indicating success. Well, success and success. Two cards of success. So that's great to see. This is really that if you can really focus at this moment in time, You've 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 done the work or you're diving deep to try and find the answers and then you're just having to make a decision and go for it. Success is assured. I had this with my mum last night and I knew I was going to have it because bless her. You know, I, I knew she would have gone back a bit in terms of um, starting to worry about was she making the right decision? Was she not making the right decision? It's just her nature to do that. Having got her to a place where she knew she was making the right decision three months ago or two months ago. Now we're back to almost like square one. And I said to her last night, I said something along the lines of, look, you've made the decision. It's now time just to act on it and, and see it through. You've now just got to do it. Um, and maybe it sounded a bit blunt, but it's really the guidance that I'm giving you here as well. And I would give myself that guidance as well, which is that when you've had that moment of clarity, you've made that decision, follow it through. Because what we've got here is success. OK, what we've got is success. 
We have been gifted 2020 vision this year, which is a gift going forward forever, really, which is trust yourself to really be able to see the truth of a situation. Trust yourself to be able to see it because you can. And your heart certainly will also help you steer you as well. And then commit to it. Walk through that gateway and success is assured. You know, even if it's painful initially, the long, medium to long term uh, energy is great success here. It's brilliant. Um, there's something here as well about when you sign on the dotted line, and this is symbolic, it's very important that you sign on the dotted line to this new life that you're trying to create or the decision that you've made with gusto, with um, enthusiasm, with happiness, with a smile on your face as much as you can. Even if you are having to walk away from something, you do so with a sort of thank you for what that taught me. Thank you for that lesson. You do it honourably. You do it respectfully. Um, you do it with as much love as you can. And you, um, and you, then you also open the door to the new with a sense of wonder and expecting the best is what I'm basically trying to say. Expecting the best. Let that, you know, the fears go. Um, they'll still be there like the monkey on your shoulder, but just it's like, you know, let just acknowledge that they're there. But this time I'm not listening to you. This time I've listened to my higher self. This time I've looked with 2020 vision. I've looked very deeply into my soul, into my being. And I know that even if this might be difficult, I know this is the right thing for me to do. OK, apply that to your life. What's coming up now? And the will, there's going to be a message here for most people. Now, this card of behind the mask, I think this to me is saying we can't hide behind the mask anymore. Um, how, how, it, how ironic, of course, lots of people are going around with masks. Um, I don't actually think it's about that. Um, I mean, that's a, you could interpret it that way, um, but that's not initially what I saw when I saw this card behind a mask. Because um, to me, it's like when you've got, I'm not talking virus here, guys. I'm just talking a mask, a symbol, an energetic mask. When I put a mask up, you can't see who I really am, you know. When I put up some sort of veil of illusion and pretend to be something that I'm not, you know, I'm hiding who I really am. Maybe we've all been hiding a little bit from who we really are. That's why we're being asked to go on this big, wide adventure. You know, under the wandering star, we've got Lee Marvin here. We've got all of them coming through, you know, do it. You know, get, why have I, for goodness sake, I'm wearing the t-shirt, the wild one. Let's remember that we, we have this wildness within us, that we're not robots, you know, that we are amazing master manifestors and creative beings um seeking ultimate expression through our life look at somebody like prince he he did that and he's saying go for it absolutely go for it don't don't hide behind the mask in terms of what you think you should look like or how you should behave because you've always done it that way to me this is like take off that and let the world see who you really are what you've really got to give what you've really got to offer and equally what you really want. I said I wanted to pull a card for the shadow side. Interestingly, on my Facebook page this week, I asked you for recommendations for a good shadow deck and I've had hundreds of recommendations. So thank you so much. I will look through them all. I've got quite a few of the decks actually anyway. Um, it did strike me. I mean, I, I hate creating more work for myself, but I thought, wow, it would be amazing if I did a Metatron deck that was about the shadow. Um, and it, you know, it's, it's a weird one because Jane and I are about to start on this new deck. I've talked about this before to you, uh, literally within the next week or so. And I've had a bit of a block on it in terms of um, OK, so what are the 55 cards and how would that present itself? Because I was going to do the Christ Consciousness deck and I probably still will do the Christ Consciousness deck. But I don't want it just to be a deck which is just repeating what's already out there, you know, in terms of the New Testament. I don't see that that really takes us anywhere new. So it's like, well, if it's a Christ Consciousness deck, what is Christ Consciousness? What does that look like? What does that feel like? I guess that's the journey that I'm on. And I just have to get into this energy of being a bit wild about it and free spirited and follow the star like the Magi did. But also there is this thing about, yeah, but a shadow deck would be amazing as well, wouldn't it? 
So I don't know, I'm a little bit confused, but um, this is my deck that at the moment, one of you said, when I said, give me a name of a good shadow deck, you said, what about the Healing Light deck by Christopher Butler? And I thought, God, yeah, I've got that one and I do use it. And I have used this for subjects that are a little bit more tricky or heavy. I've, I've used it for, um, uh, I used it for the Harry and Meghan one, actually, and it worked very well. Um, and indeed, I do think it's a good deck for shadow work. I really do. Uh, one of you gifted me this, thank you, with about four other decks. And I remember when I unwrapped this one, I think I said it on Facebook, I nearly gave it away. I literally, I unwrapped it and it was like, mm, I don't resonate with this. This is this feels quite dark, you know, it's not me. And uh, Metatron made me go and get it out of the, you know, the, the charity bag. It's like, no, you do need that. And I'm so glad I did because it is, it's a great deck for the shadow. So let's see, I don't know if that's the intention with which he made it, but I think it works very well as a shadow deck. Let's see what our shadow is doing, shall we? Let's see what our shadow wants to say to us. Oh, yes, of course, of course. What our shadow wants to do is block all of what I've said in the, most of this video. What I've been saying to you is follow the wandering star. Try to go for it. If it feels right, go for it. You've done the, you've done the inner work. Only you know whether you've done the inner work or not. OK, I'm not talking about a sudden decision that just comes out of nowhere on a whim. I'm talking about considered uh, decisions which you've reflected on, you've meditated on, you know in your heart to be right. But there's a lot of fear. And so what the shadow says is, are you sure? Are you sure you want to walk away? Eight of Cups. Are you sure you want a new direction? The Knight of Wands, which is the card of action, the card of action to walk away. Are you sure you want a choice? The Two of Pentacles. Are you sure you want that? Would it not be much better just to stay where you are right now? You know, stay where you are right now. That's what the shadow does. That's what the shadow does. Um, and it does it because... There's a part of it which is trying to protect us from making a mistake, but it's at odds with this higher self part of us, which is saying, hold on, who are you listening to, your shadow or your light? In this new adventure where we've got success guaranteed and protection, the Black Panther is protection, why are you going to fail? So this is, this is the monkey on our shoulder, which is like, nah, be very careful, you know careful not to walk away, careful to rush in, you know, careful to give yourself another option or another opportunity. Yeah. I think Bella's about to bark her head off because I think that's my daughter's new mobile phone about to arrive. So if she does, apologies. But I'm now going to just pull a final card for us and then I'm going to get this uploaded. So one more card, please, for the new moon in Gemini. Oh, I, 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 I'm speechless. I am speechless because I don't know this deck of cards. They're new. I only got them last week. I've never seen this card before. Oh, my God. The card of wonders. And on the bottom of the deck, the card of freedom. Oh my God, how beautiful is that? How amazing is spirit? And then we've got the card of love as well. Oh my God. I'm a bit speechless. I've been saying about finding, following the joy, following the magic, follow the wandering star. Thank you, Lee Marvin. Okay, the card of wonders and the card of freedom. And this card of love to me, it's like, follow your heart, follow your heart. That gateway card that we had earlier. Look at the birds that are flocking through that gateway. Look how many of them are already through it. The birds teach us so much, don't they? I'm so in awe of the, the bird kingdom, actually. Um, and the beauty of them and the perfection of their timing. 
you know, the, the birds that migrate and just are able to, just to land on the other side of the world when they're meant to, you know, they know how to do it. Um, this morning, I can't remember what I was talking about. It was something a bit personal and I don't know, it was a problem that I've got at the moment. And, uh, and then I looked out at my window and there's a the little robin, you know, just sitting there, you know, um, for me to see. And uh, I, I knew it was a little sign from spirit, which is like, it's okay, it's gonna be fine, you know. And, um, but yet yeah, they, they just symbolize this amazing freedom through the gateway. The card of wonders has also got, that looks to me a bit like an amethyst point. Amethyst is again linking up to, for me to the um, crown chakra. Um, in the Metatron system, my colour system, lavender is the soul star. It's the soul star energy. The soul star is the chakra above your crown. So it's also um, opening up to that guidance from spirit that's trying to help you to follow, the, to, to seek the wonder in life to seek the wonder in life. Um, there's also a sort of violet flame energy around with it in terms of just letting, if you're having to close something out and let go, to violet flame that, to bring in the energy of forgiveness as well, to bring in the energy of balance and harmony. No slamming of doors, no his histrionics in terms of leaving something behind respectfully closing the door. Metatron's showing me now, it's like a, di a door being closed very reverently, very softly. You know, if you've got children when they were little and you used to creep around the house <laughs> and you just closed the doors very quietly so as not to disturb, that's the energy of it. Because it's like the song said, Elvis Costello, it's like everything has already been said. Everything's been played out. We're at the end of some karmic cycles here. And so with reverence and with respect, you close the door, you say thank you, you say goodbye and you move on and you explore the wonders and the freedom of what your heart is trying to um, show you. This is big. And I, I think this isn't just a message for this week. Remember, I was getting tongue tied at the beginning in terms of is this May, is this June, is this July? This seems to go through the next few months. There's a flowering that's happening over the summer. Um, there's a blossoming. I might very well call this video something to do with blossoming and flowering because it feels as though it is about that and wandering star. What a beautiful message. What a beautiful message. Thank you all so much for listening, for being here, for supporting me. I'd also like to thank you for, um, I forgot to say this, I think. I think I started one of my other videos recently and I, I said something about thank you for all the support. Thank you for the likes, which of course I thank you and comments. But I think I forgot to say the most important thing, which was thank you for the people that donate to this channel. Honestly, you are extraordinary. And I, we, we do try and thank everybody that donates and maybe we miss a few, but it um, it means so much to me because it means that I can also keep giving out free material basically to anybody that needs it. That that teaching video that I did this week on duality, uh, it was a teaching video. It's something that I could have easily put behind a, a, um, a pay barrier, you know, in terms of Vimeo or something like that. And I really don't, didn't want to do it because I, I want the work to get out. And people who um, who support me from time to time doesn't have to be every month doesn't you know it could be once a year or you don't even have to do that I'm not asking for money I just am saying you help other people to hear the messages when they need to hear them whether it's now whether it's in a year's time and um, I honor you I really honor you I must just show you my ca my candle Metatron's showing saying show your candle to them look at this cute as a button <laughs> I think I bought this for a present for somebody, but I, I thought it was so nice. I, I wanted it myself, cute as a button. It smells nice as well. Okay, enough. I'm going to go out and now enjoy a bit of sunshine and do some emails and uh, get on with my day. Much love. Take care of yourself. Have a good uh, new moon in Gemini. Uh, have a good weekend. Just... Um, We've done a lot of work on this channel this week as well. If you've been watching that duality video, let that um, sink in and integrate. Oh, also, very importantly, I said that I was going to put up the picture of the violet pill. And the reason I haven't put it up yet is because I want to put some words to it. OK, 
and um, of course it's going to be completely open to your interpretation in terms of what you see and when you meditate you might get something very different but I would like to Metatron show me it's a bit like um, putting a baby out into the world but you want to dress it right and then if you decide actually she's overdressed it and that coat needs taking off take it off but I, that's just my energy I want to I want to birth it properly. I'm, I'm very much into this work's got to be done right. So I hope I might get some words out today, but um, you know, we'll see how the day goes. It's uh, bringing channeled words through is, it's not just like pushing a button on the jukebox. It's like, you've got to be in the right energy to talk about any subject on any particular day. Today it was talking about wonder and Lee Marvin and all of that. How beautiful was that? Much love, guys. See you soon. See you soon. I am going now. Bye-bye. <laughs>